Chapter 4 I, Rajo, am here to suggest peace and not a sword. I have hoped that all peoples could live in peace. I have not come to set father against son and mother against daughter. I have not come to bring division, but rather a hope for peace. Your scripture saith that Jesus had come not to bring peace, but rather the sword. He hath come to set father against son, and mother against daughter, and thus nation against nation. Is this the spirit of love? Is this the same man who saith, love your neighbor as yourself, and treat others the way you want to be treated? The scripture saith these things, and more troublesome things, coming from Jesus. Is God a respecter of persons? The scripture saith he is not, but Jesus saith, no man can come unto me, except it was given unto him by my Father. Is this, or is he therefore, a respecter of some and not of others? Hath he not said, I chose you, and you have not chosen me? How can he be a just and fair God? Thus he is saying, he hath not chosen multitudes of others, but only whom he desires to choose it. If thou believest the scriptures, then thy God is a respecter of persons, unfair, ruthless, and selfish, who selects some to be saved and some not to be saved. He hath predestined some to heaven and some not, according to the scriptures. Can any thinking man with common sense believe a God of love could do such an unfair and evil act? The idea seemeth to be made by men. For men are respecters of persons. Therefore, we have a God created by men after the image of men. I too once believed I was chosen of him and felt the spiritual bliss. But am I now guilty for thinking, reasoning, being logical and desiring to be sensible and realistic? Are we therefore asked not to think it and be logical? Doth God desire his slaves to be submissive sheep who are not allowed to question inconsistency, unfairness, and even his existence? If your God knoweth hearts of men, he knoweth that I was once truly sincere in my love, worship, and adoration, and hath done my very best to please him according to the scriptures. I speak it the truth. But what man can remain in his right mind and continue to go against the nature of the flesh and its natural desires? To desire is human, and lust is desire to which every human expresses. Doth God expect man to pass through this life without pleasure and enjoyment of the physical senses, just to find favor with him? If so, it is like demanding a man not to get wet when thrown into an ocean. This is not possible, and our real life experiences reveals to us it is not even possible with a God who is supposed to grant thy followers special spiritual strength. Verily I say unto you that men claiming to speak and write for a God have brought nothing but pain and suffering to this world having caused men all manner of torment, confusion, and madness, and hath introduced doctrines to make sheepish slaves for a God in which thy shepherd uses for thy own appetite, abuse, and entertainment. We can firmly and rightfully place the blame on religious doctrines, which has since the beginning tried to control men with fear and terror and inscribing their letters and books as if they were holy and divine, thus deluding the gullible, simple minds who are so easily swayed by every wind of doctrine, comprised of promises, impossibilities, and nonsense. Are not the scriptures the root source of all fear and trembling in a man's heart and soul? Are they not heavy chains of guilt that strangle the breath and life out of humans? Do they not compel men and women to be obedient slaves and servants, or else suffer a terrible fate? Do scriptures reveal a God who is obsessed with being worshipped and demands conformity to his will and submission to his jealous, vengeful, and selfish nature? 
If you saith unto me, God is not selfish, then I tell you, the scriptures are highly contradictory. Hath God blamed his creation for being imperfect and for not, quote, dying on the cross daily, unquote? I seeth not a God of love in these scriptures, but rather one of fear and torment, if ye do not abide and follow the straight and narrow path. Fear shall grip your hearts when you peer into the scriptures. You will be led to accept the God plan, and later be told if you leave, God will torment you forever. How can this be good news? Some will say God is love, and he has mercy and forgives, but only if you accept his son, or else it is hellfire and brimstone for non-believers. True agape love is highly contradictory to a doctrine of damnation. No father, not even unto the ends of this earth, would do this to his child. Hath not the scriptures been chosen accordingly to strike at the most fear in men? In doing so, the church and governmental powers have control over the masses by striking fear and terror of hellfire into the sheep of the world. Men's minds are exceedingly impressionable and gullible, and beliefs about unseen gods are taken as truth without no thought or examination. We are all so easily swayed and terrified. In scriptures, I see not a God of unconditional love, but rather one who delights in creating vessels of destruction, predestined and already chosen for that purpose of amusement, I say. Shall we ask ourselves, is this the kind of God that deserves to be worshipped and praised? Does his flock follow and bow down to him out of fear? I think the God of the scriptures hath been made after the image and likeness of men, for they are alike in many ways. Men like to play favoritism. They are jealous, ruthless, vengeful, and unfair, and like to be dictators, having total control over their subjects. And the people who dare to think for themselves and deviate from the norm will be subject to some form of their punishment. You see, men have created the gods after their own image. When you understand this, then it all begins to make sense. Let him who hath ears to hear heareth what common sense is saying. Let him who hath eyes to see seeth what reality has revealed.